fellow outsiders and welcome to today's episode. This is the third cabin update and today and last week I was clearing more trees uh, around the cabin site and I'm happy to say that I've pretty much cleared everything around the cabin site now. I just have a few more trees to remove and uh, some brush to get out of the way. Um, but it's important that the cabin site is clear so that we have plenty of space to build uh, and the cabin gets lots of sun and as well so we can get the tractor in to pull the foundation boulders in place. Uh, so it's important that we do this. It's been a long time coming. I've been so anxious to get the foundation in place. I'm really excited for that. Today I'm out here again by myself so uh, the work is always a little slower. Uh, when I'm doing it on my own I have to be a little slower too just because I need to be careful. Uh, but things are going well. I'm happy with what I did today. Uh, last week I, I tried to set up a water collection system with a tarp that I strung up in a tree and I uh, made it flow into a 250 gallon water tote that I have here on site. I will soon need a supply of water on site so that I can pressure wash the dirt off the cedar logs before I build with them. I will also need to pressure wash the poplar logs I've collected because I will be cutting them up into flooring with a sawmill that I hope to purchase in the near future. If there is any dirt in the bark, it will quickly doll up my sawmill blades, which is why I need a pressure washer and as well water. As the cabin build progresses, I will also need water to mix the cabin chinking up, which will go between each course of logs. And I knew it was a bit of a, it was a 50-50 chance because, you know, if, if a big wind comes, the, the tarp can get torn down and all this stuff. But the area that I set it up in uh, isn't very windy. It's, it's actually quite a calm clearing. And so I was just hoping that it would stay up and so that it could collect water whenever it rained. Uh, but unfortunately, mm -hmm. there, it did get torn down. So uh, it's back to the drawing board with that. On a different topic, I have come across many porcupines during my time in the bush, and this year is no different. Porcupines love to eat tree cambium, especially cedar cambium, which can make them quite destructive to the forest if their numbers go unchecked by local predators. But all of that aside, I remember being told as a boy that there was an unspoken rule among early settlers, fur traders, and natives concerning porcupines, and it was that if anyone were to come across a porcupine, they were to leave it alone not because of their dangerous quills, but because porcupines were easy food. Quills aside, porcupines are defenseless. They have bad eyesight, they lack agility, and they are very slow. I know from experience that it is easy to outrun a porcupine on the ground, even at a light jog. Although other animals generally leave porcupines alone, all a human would need to kill a porcupine is a sharp stick. It was because porcupines were easy to kill that the early pioneers and natives treated these animals as an emergency food source and were intentionally left for those who might be in desperate need. This unspoken rule probably benefited porcupines greatly. That's because most humans passing through would have had the proper weapons for hunting other game to sustain themselves and so they wouldn't need to dip into the porcupine surplus. Anyway, there's a little tidbit of survival knowledge for you. And now you know what's been happening in my world. Hello, Mr. Porcupine. Oh, did I scare you? I'm sorry. Is this your home? Guess you don't want to talk right now. Okay. See you later. It's nice meeting you. Maybe next time. And there's another one. Hello, little fella. I was just visiting your neighbor. He don't want to talk to me either. It's okay. On the outsiders saying, until next time.